Okay. So we called it for 850. So um, I think we can get started. I just wanted to say thank you. I wanted to welcome everybody here tonight. I really appreciate you all being here. We actually, um, we worked toward transitioning our children to Google Classroom this year. This is the first time that we've officially gone to Google Classroom with our fourth and fifth graders. And we thought that it would be an appropriate um, use of, of technology for them right now since we're in this virtual school setting and because they've become really good at using Google Apps for Education. So we uh, really, we thought it was a good idea and we really appreciate the help that Rachel Green has given us in so many ways, but specifically with this um, too, because she has really spearheaded this transition with us and she's also volunteered to speak to all of you tonight. So thank you so much, Rachel, and I'll turn it over to you and I will mute myself. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, I will say that Google Classroom, besides being a great choice while we're in transition, is also a great choice because it is what our school uses in middle school and in upper school. So having our students have a comfort using this platform for um, as our digital classroom has an advantage even moving forward. Not only will it help us while we're virtual, it also is a great way for teachers to provide feedback to our students when we're in school. And again, um, having those skill sets for middle school and high school. So I'm going to just briefly cover how you could best support your children while we are, are using um, Google Classroom while we are virtual. Um, I will also say that we are really committed to make sure that the children have a great foundation for this and we are going to work and we have been working over the past uh, two weeks with the fourth and fifth graders getting comfortable in this space. Where at this point we would see parent involvement just at the way beginning would be um, if a student was going to miss class for a dentist appointment or something like that and you as a parent would like to see what your child has missed and have an opportunity to get them caught up it would be um that's that's where we would see at this point some parental involvement it's also a great way for you to check to see what your children are, have been doing but in terms of homework right now while we're virtual we are not going to be assigning homework but i will explain how you could find missing work for when homework will be assigned so I'm going to share my screen and I am using um, a real student <laughs> as classroom. So I will just briefly explain how you can find your child's Google Classroom. We have invited all the fourth and fifth grade students to their different classes and at the website classroom.google.com I'll find I'll show you other ways to find this site. But on this website, students can easily see what classes they participate in. We have unified, we have made it pretty easy to find the classrooms by having some uniformity between our class names. So as you can see, all the classes tell the child the pod they're in and the class subject underneath the teacher. So if your child opens up their classroom, um, their Google Classroom, they will see all the classrooms that they are participating in. So this is an example of a child in 4C, my son, and he, these are the teachers that he has participated in their rooms. For a student to be able to access this, they can either go to this website, classroom.google.com, or they could click on this, I call it the waffle, these nine dots, and if you click on the nine dots, you will see that there is the Google Classroom tab. There's Docs, Sheets, Drive, Gmail. These are easily moved around. What I have done for most of the students, I've let them know how easily you could move it so they can have their classroom as that very first that very first square. And it's easy for them when they start class in the morning to get from their Google Classroom to something else that they'll be working in, including their school email. An important tip, this has come up quite a number of times, students who are using computers that are shared with other family members will say, I can't get on today, or I don't see my class work because they are not logged into their own personal email account. And again, also a lot of students have personal email accounts that are not 
our, their school email accounts. So it's important for students to make sure they're using their MJBHA account to access Google Classroom. They can easily find if they're logged into the right place by clicking right here. If you see that underneath it says Google account, it says their name and it says their email address. So you can have your child check right there and make sure they're in the right place. It is easy to get out of it and switch to another account just by clicking on it. See, it says sign out of all the other accounts. They can add their account, make sure that their school email account is how they are accessing Google Classroom. All right, I'm gonna briefly show how um, students can access work. All teachers are using it in a very similar format just to keep things really simple for students to be able to find work. When you click on your classroom, you will find there are three tabs at the top. Your child has three tabs. The first is the stream. Stream is, I like to think of it sort of like a news feed. It's what's happening in that classroom. Teachers might make announcements. A lot of times students are having some conversation back and forth or asking questions here, but it's basically a place where you would see the happenings. But where we encourage our students to check for work is under classwork. Classwork is like the meat and potatoes of Google Classroom. It's where students can find assignments. Now, like we said in the beginning, because we're not having homework, this will be done in class. Although if a student was absent, this is where they could find that day's assignment. And if a student wants to go back and relook at work or recheck work, this is where they could find those assignments. A lot of teachers are organized by date. So that is another simple way to find what was missed or what had happened that day. And then people, that says the teachers and the classmates, they can easily find a classmate if they want to work with somebody on a project. They can easily find that student, click email, and send their classmate an email to work together. The fourth graders have been really excited, and I know they've been using emails um, quite often just in the last few days, just excited about having it. All right, what else is important for parents to know? There is, on this main tab, again, this is the classes, right? These are all the classes your child has joined. This is the to-do. To-do shows all your classes in one place with all the outstanding work. So to-do is a great way to be, okay, the day is over. This is why when we talked about turn it in time in all the different, um, in all the different, in all the different grades, this is a great way to see, okay, what do I have left on my to-do list? It's all your classes in one place. And then all their classes. So settings. This is something we are just starting to talk to the students about, but when I talk about how it affects parents for parents' emails, this is the same spot. Um, I'll talk about that in just a second, but here, you see how there's all these, this is again, if you go right under the classes all the way down where it says settings, you will find where it talks about notifications, that is when Google Classroom is sending you an email. So you could decide to turn that on or off just as easily as this switch. I tell the students to keep that on. So if a student has turned in an assignment and a teacher has commented and or graded that work, they will get an email, your assignment has been handed back to you. Or if a teacher has assigned work, they will also get an email that tells them that their work has been assigned. And it will also tell them if somebody has put a comment that might mention them or um, a reminder of work that's due. When we talk about parents in terms of getting notifications, we are going to be inviting parents to Google Classroom as something that's called a guardian. And a guardian will have access by, via email to Google Classroom notifications. You may choose, this is something, as soon as you get the email, it gives you two options. Option number one, a guardian could choose a weekly summary. That means every Friday, that's when Google Classroom sends it out, every Friday you will get an email that will let you know what work from all your child's classes, what work is outstanding, or you could choose to get a daily notification, a daily email of what work is due and, 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 um, and is coming up, any quizzes or any assignments. So 
for me as a parent, I find that I would love to use it in the weekly because just at the end of the week, I sort of want to know what is coming up. If you feel, although sometimes earlier in the year when you're not sure how your child is managing and juggling their schedule, you might feel as a parent, listen, I need to know every day if their work is, then it's an easy way to say, have you done this assignment today? I see this was, is still outstanding. Are you having trouble with it? Um, I see that you have a quiz coming up on Thursday. Should we re review for it? But it's up to you to decide how often you want to be getting notifications once you are invited. The reason why we waited a little bit of time just in the way that this year is rolling out virtually and because we are not assigning homework, right now the teachers are going to be checking in with those students during that last little bit of the day during turn it in time if all work has been handed in. So that's a way for us to check in with them has today's work been submitted. But when homework is assigned and it's gonna be up to the student to check their work at the end of the day, that is a t that's something you would have to think about. Um, with fourth graders, you might want a little more handholding till you see that they could independently get their homework done and submitted. For fifth graders, some of them may already be comfortable getting their work in and a weekly checking check-in might be enough for you to know if, if they are keeping up with their work. So, it, so the other piece um, I would say that would be important on here, the calendar piece, at this point, there's not a lot of long-term assignments that have been assigned, but the calendar would be where all the classes would be putting their long-term assignments. It's a great way just to see what's coming up next and to help your child learn to prioritize assignments that are coming up sooner. This is also in, in, in high school, all, all the students are um, really <laughs> spending a lot of time on the calendar, figuring out what's coming up and what is um, what, what should be prioritized. So it's a great way in lower school when they might not be juggling as many things to have your child spend a couple minutes on here, maybe every couple of days and say, all right, let's see what's coming up next and what we should give time for. So those are the pieces that are important. Again, you don't have to be concerned as a parent about your, your child joining any of the classes. We are going to make sure that all the children are enrolled in the different classes. Shortly, you'll be getting email about joining the classes as that guardian. So you'll be in on what is going on and what is being sent out from the classes. But your child's classes will be all looking in the similar fashion to this where students can see all the classes and easily check their work. And again, at the end of the day, if you're checking in, you don't have to click on every individual class to find the work because you can always use the to-do list to sort of see everything in one place instead of entering and exiting every, um, every class. All right, one last piece. Um, under classwork, I'm gonna just show one as an example. Okay, so the bio poem. This is how we submit work. When a student is assigned something, every student has this button that pops up. See, this is, a, this is an assignment he has already submitted to his teacher, but there is right over here, it will say, turn it in. And that means if that button is not there, that means that the assignment has already been turned in. But when students are completing assignments at home, um, that would be like the phrase that you're using with your children and saying, okay, have you turned in your work? All work, once it's work, once an assignment has been submitted and they have pressed that turn in button, the teacher is able to also provide feedback. That's really the best, um, the best, of the best use for our Google Classroom documents is teachers can edit and make comments right on their work and then students can easily access it and provide feedback right away and are able to resubmit work with, um, with edits that have been done. So Google Classroom is so awesome just in the sense that students, it's, it's, it's their digital classroom portfolio, all their classwork, all their information in one place. It's really simple to use and our students are getting more and more comfortable in this space. For fourth grade, our big goals for the year, besides for learning how to manage all their classes and learning how to submit work to the teachers, they also are going to be learning how to use the different features in uh, for their Google accounts 
including um, besides for the documents, learning how to use slides and things like that. So is there any reason to keep Seesaw now? Great question. I think once, once, once we're finished, third grade is, is when we use Seesaw until I don't think we're going to use it in fourth grade at all. Google Classroom is really what we've transitioned to. And moving forward, it's what we're going to be using. So this is a great, um, it, this, is, it, this is actually, they're just ahead of it, ahead of the game that in fourth grade, they're getting a early access to learning about Google Classroom. Um, that's it. I love it. I think the kids are really enjoying having a way to send in their work. And also we've talked about the fact that in class, when a student has filled something out and you know you can get that quick feedback from a teacher, um, editing and spelling, this is a way that we could virtually connect with the kids and provide feedback right away, even if it's just comments on their work. But definitely in terms of, um, in terms of using this one platform for all our students, it's keeping everything really in one place. It's keeping the, the students have one place to go to find out what's coming up, what assignments are due, and that, that's gonna help them also with their organizational skills. So any questions? If there are any questions, we're happy to take them. I can read them off the chat for you so that um, Mrs. Oh, it's Green been can... so thorough. Just no one has <laughs> overall, overall like done with the day, <laughs> day over. Um, I'll say our goal is really, really, really to have the students be as independent as possible on this platform. And that's why we're going to spend a lot of time making sure that they're really comfortable in this space. And even eventually learning how to work together, collaborating with their classmates on Google Classroom. So that's also like an added piece that really is a focus for this year. Um, if your children have any questions, they should really feel comfortable asking us and we really want them to be able to do this on their own, even, even in fourth grade. So awesome. Can I have a comment? Yes. Uh, this is also a great way to start practicing typing in Ivrit they could use the Google document and it's a wonderful way to start um, getting their assignment done, some of the assignments, especially for fifth graders, uh, type in Hebrew. It's a wonderful way to, to do it. Okay. Thank you. Right. For our fifth graders, we sent home those stickers, so hopefully everybody had a chance yes. to put the stickers on the keyboards. Any other questions before we say good night? Okay. Well, I think you just did that thorough of a job, Rachel, so thank you so much. <laughs> I really, again, want to just express appreciation to our two teachers who presented tonight and took time preparing and also coming and being here at their um, children's bedtimes and so on. So thank you so much for going above and beyond. Really, really appreciate it. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you Hi. very much for your commitment you. as well. Thank you.